Hey, I think that um, it's it's already five past. I think we can um, we can start, and while people will uh, continue joining, we will we'll admit them. Uh, over to uh, Giuseppe, I think. Okay, Silvia. Then thank you so much for uh, giving us the floor, and uh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> to the Global Logistics Cluster Collect for organizing these uh, three sessions of today, tomorrow and Friday. Uh, let me make a few comments on uh, the three sessions before introducing the Humanitarian Logistics Data Bank that we ideated here in uh, Dubai together with our community. Uh, if you look at the three proposed sessions, they have a common thread. They are going to approach uh, a common challenge that uh, we have when uh, moving humanitarian aid in emergency response. Uh, today, substantially through the Humanitarian Logistics Data Bank, we are going to talk about prepositioning of humanitarian aid as an important element of the emergency preparedness and response, but uh, in uh, the framework of uh, an international uh, call for uh, aid and support. The session which is going to be, let's say, prepared and uh, given by Florent from ASUT, is going to talk about uh, the stock management at the national level. So the humanitarian aid, again, the movement of humanitarian aid at national level. The third session is going to talk about, again, the movement of the humanitarian aid, but when those aid are requested to cross borders and are going to go through, a customs process and what uh, we want as a humanitarian community we would like to avoid to see stopped the humanitarian aid within the borders because they need to go through the bureaucratic process which is a normal process but still uh, uh, remain uh, a needed process is a must, the customs process. So I believe that you should not be surprised when uh, you are going to attend also the tomorrow and the Friday sessions, because in my opinion, really there is this uh, common approach that uh, we have. Why? the humanitarian community of uh, Dubai International Humanitarian City decided to build up a humanitarian logistics data bank. You know very well that whenever there is a disaster, any government official that is in charge for uh, the response usually is going to call the resident coordinator, the relief coordinator, uh, whoever is in country, and uh, unfortunately is a diplomat, is uh, somebody who's going to call agency by agency and trying to understand uh, who's managing what and where. And this is the reason why there is uh, an information vis-a-vis -vis the country need after a few days. So, uh, we noted this uh, gap uh, since many years. Trust me, I started this idea of uh, creating a humanitarian logistics data bank in 1996 when I was recruited for the first time with uh, OCHA. But for many years, OCHA attempted any way to create a sort of platform through which should be shared the information related to the stock's preposition. Anyway, looking into the challenges that uh, were, uh, let me say, encountered through OCHA, what we did is simply we decided to, to use a total different approach. 
by detecting uh, substantially customs transactions. And to use the same uh, language of the customs means that even uh, in the language of impact Friday, we are going to facilitate exactly even the crossing border. So there is really a strong link, a strong link again between the three presentations. So this presentation is going to give us uh, an overview on uh, what is available and where for international response. Everything is based on customs transactions. Theoretically, it was easier, theoretically, it was easier to go through each organization and asking them, can we link all together the warehouse management system? If I should think about only and exclusively WFP, you know, even the same unit HRD cannot tap directly. It's going to use an interface because uh, the WMS, the warehouse management system in WFP is linked to the big monster that is used for managing finance, uh, HR and so on and so on. So this is something that is literally impossible. So, but to detect the transactions through customs in the movement of the, the humanitarian aid is not absolutely a piece of cake, trust me. Uh, it's still a challenge, but we are going to talk together with uh, governments. And this is what we are doing. As a Dubai International Humanitarian City today, I'm representing a government and I'm dealing with the other governments in order to get into this kind of solution. We already say, agreed with the, the government of Dubai. We reached an agreement with the government of Italy. We reached an agreement with the government of uh, Panama. And we are going to, I hope soon even, to sign an agreement with the government of uh, Jordan. Uh, this is uh, why, because uh, we mapped not only a certain number of uh, line items, which are part of the humanitarian stocks, but we mapped also those humanitarian hubs which are called for international response. You are going to see them uh, in uh, a few seconds, uh, the full picture of those humanitarian apps. Uh, is still there, Guangzhou, everybody knows. Uh, we know that there is uh, uh, something in place for Guangzhou. Myself, I'm going to receive uh, most probably next week a visit of a Chinese delegation but I'm pretty sure that even Quang Tzu most probably is going to remain into the picture. Uh, I have a very short video and then I leave the, the floor to Xia before presenting the humanitarian logistics data bank. It's going to be really a very live presentation just to, to give the opportunity of asking any kind of question. Xia, if we can go with the video. Thank you. Communication between various humanitarian organizations is a daily necessity. This need is insinuated when disaster strikes. However, time is never on their side. This is Dubai's international humanitarian city, and here we respond on time. Imagine a platform that allows real-time information sharing on a humanitarian aid stocks and flow providing the global humanitarian community with information on the exact positioning of critical relief items, their quantity, location, ownership, and movement. You don't have to imagine it. It has become a reality. Introducing the Humanitarian Logistics Data Bank. The deal is that if a disaster strikes, people will be able to see what supplies where. The Humanitarian Logistics Data Bank marks a milestone for corporations amongst the humanitarian actors in regard to emergency preparedness and response. Logistics makes or breaks many of the operations where we're involved in. This will help the United Nations 
and our NGO partners do something we were never able to do before. The data bank ensures a global mapping of aid, improves coordination, and documents a humanitarian assistance to better serve those in need. Having the data bank will increase the effectiveness and efficiency of the use of the facility. By employing automated tracking of aid movement based on customs data from ports, airports, and other entry points, the data bank allows record time response to humanitarian crises. This database is really going to save lives, save money, and do, I think, uh, immeasurable good around the world. Furthermore, this tool avoids overlaps of a humanitarian aid and optimizes interventions. The data bank gives both affected countries and humanitarian actors in crisis-torn areas access to updated information on the availability of relief items in humanitarian depots and warehouses. Today, in Dubai's international humanitarian city and in the humanitarian hubs of Italy and Panama. Tomorrow, in other humanitarian hubs and the replication goes on to accommodate the 11 international humanitarian hubs around the world. Hi, uh, good afternoon. I think it's good afternoon for everyone attending. Is my voice is clear? Yes, it's good morning, for example, in Europe, yes, but do worry. Okay, good Go morning. Ahead, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, just, I will just uh, follow and add to what uh, Giuseppe has explained the introduction of this session. Uh, the dashboard uh, is a, a digital platform that relies mainly on information coming directly from the customs based on the HS code of, the line, of each line items. So at the beginning of this, when we saw the need of this project and the beginning of this project, what we have done, we have uh, contacted all the major humanitarian actors uh, who are doing the majority of the operations. We took a list of their line, relief line items, what they are importing and exporting, and we did map uh, more than 5,000 line items to make sure that they are uh, making sure about two important things. First one is that they are using the right HS code. The second point is to make sure that they are, uh, the names of the relief items are unified. I think maybe you all know that same item sometimes is called something by UNICEF, something else by UNICR, although it's the same item. So we made sure that we have one name, right? It's just code for all the relief items. And once we have done this, we have shared the same list of the HS code with the final one with the customs to verify and confirm. And since then, all the uh, transactions done by our members they, during importing or exporting are shared with us and then uploaded in the dashboard. Why customs? Because we all know that this is a reliable source of information. It's a live data. There is no way that there is any import or export transaction can be done th without passing through the customs. So uh, as you can see on this screen that, and as Jessica mentioned, we have Dubai Customs, our main partner in this. We have also signed the agreement with the Italian government, with Panama. And those are the members who has a humanitarian stock in IC, for example, and this is who we have their information available here. So when a disaster happened or an emergency happened, all what we have to do, I'll just give you an example now. We log into the dashboard. If we are looking for a specific items, if it's tents, for example, I will go to shelter, buy product. I will type here tent, and that's it. So now immediately now I know because I chose the nearest hub to me. For example, if I'm choosing Dubai in this case, I can see that WFP have 5,000, WHO this much, IFRC this much. So total, I have 33,000 tents available in, 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 in this particular hub. And the same thing apply for all the relief line items. It took uh, less than a minute to know this information, why usually it take hours and maybe days 
uh, to verify the data and see who's the stock owner and what is available in each hub. As Giuseppe mentioned that we have Italy and Panama and UAE and we are aiming to have the total 11 hubs that we showed during the video available here. And this is our target and this is what we are trying to do. Uh, we, we, we use Dubai as, a, as an example now in UAE. The total stock available that we have currently as we speak in IC warehouses is uh, the value is $144 million divided into the main eight clusters being food security, health, shelter, education, protection, logistics, emergency communications, and water and sanitation. However, the, the benefit of this is that we can go back in history and see what are the changes are happening. For example, if we go in 2017, I can see that the stock value at that time was $43 million, $100 million less than what we have currently today. And if you can see here in health cluster, the value of the health-related items was at that time $5 million, $5.5 million. And moving forward by years, we can see that how this is increasing, the value of the health cluster and the total value of the relief items stored in Dubai. In 2019, for example, in 2029, and this gave us an indication, and this is one of the main benefits of having a data uh, to, to that we are realizing, we realize that the health stock is increasing in IC, which means that we have to act immediately and make sure that we have facilities available to accommodate those health uh, items. And we make sure that we have the minimum standard for storing medical items. So we started a project of having the cold chain and the kitting center available for those items. And when 2020 happened, uh, COVID-19 started, I mean, you can see the big jump of the health cluster from 20 something to 59, more than double uh, of the value of the relief items. So by then, we, what we did, we only expedited the process of having the cold chain and the kitting center ready. And instead of a two year plan, we, have it, we had it ready within three to four months, uh, sorry, three to six month uh, time frame to accommodate the need of storing those health-related items. Uh, moving forward uh, to the second page of this uh, digital platform, the humanitarian logistic data bank, this is also another page where it shows the total value of relief items dispatched from a particular hub. So you can see as, as of today, we have reached from Dubai 100, or our members reached from Dubai 134 different countries with a total value of $131 million divided into this clusters. And you can see 42 is one of the biggest clusters, which is the medical cluster, uh, health related clusters as well, together with the logistics. Um, moving, if we go back again, the same scenario, what we have done in the stock available, we can see the total dispatches was $74 million to 93 countries only. There's a 40 additional countries has been added to the operations from IC, and this shows the important and now people or operationally, the members and the suppliers realize, uh, re did, did realize that the importance of uh, the international humanitarian city as a humanitarian hub. Again, if you see in 2022, during COVID-19, the total dispatches went to $80 million for health-related uh, items with a total of $130 million uh, in total for relief items to 126 countries. Now, uh, there is another benefit also for the dashboard, uh, which is happening, and we, we all know when a disaster happens, usually everybody or everyone in the humanitarian communities uh, would like to support the affected countries. So we start dispatching relief items, um, regardless that this might be over uh, of the need, uh, what is required in the affected countries. So we start sending tents from here, uh, another organization sending tents and the third organization sending tents, but sometimes we send over than what it is required. So by using this uh, platform, you can decide, you can choose a specific country and you can tell exactly how much uh, from this specific hub, how many tents or how many blankets has been dispatched to this country. I would take, for example, now, uh, uh, Pakistan or Libya, let's say Libya, for example. So I can see that uh, under shelter, we have already, they have sent 2000 blankets to Libya. So this will avoid duplications and to save time and efforts. So maybe if I want to help, I will focus on another area 
or another cluster, or uh, we send tents instead of sending blankets. Uh, the last page is give you an overall information about a summary per month, the total value of dispatch items, the countries that we have, they have received, uh, as you can see, Pakistan and Yemen and Afghanistan are the most uh, highest, uh, I mean, the highest countries in receiving aid due to the recent emergencies. The top five members, uh, they have dispatched relief items, the top five products also. Um, if we go back to before uh, COVID-19, you can see WDFP, for example, is the, 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 the value, the most uh, active members at that period. And if you see that the items are mainly shelter-related items like blankets, water purification, tarpaulin. However, during COVID-19, 2022, WHO took the lead in this, I mean, being the, the most uh, active uh, UN agency during COVID-19. And if you can see the top five products also has been changed from shelter-related items to uh, medical-related items and hygiene, like at, uh, face masks, gloves, gowns, soap, and water purifications. And you can search by aid by region. I mean, the filtration are, are uh, the filters uh, are um, um, very easy to use. You can choose by member, you can choose a year, you can choose a month. Uh, it is a very uh, useful tool. And trust me, what we are showing in the dashboard here is only a small percentage of the data that we have. We all agree now with this uh, uh, period uh, of our life now is data is very powerful. And the more data you have and the know how to use it and you have the right tools, the more helpful it is for you for current and future planning. On top of this, we cannot deny also the fact that we have started also communicating and partnering already with the companies who has the tools for the AI, for the artificial intelligence. And we, we are going to try to implement the same since we have the data already to see how we can um, uh, take in consideration broadcast. Now, using the historical data that we have for the last five years, we can the data or the AI tool, the artificial intelligence tool, can tell us exactly or can give us an indication or an idea that what might happen in the future, uh, taking consideration the previous history and can tell us exactly that you have to have last year in August, for example, during monsoon season, you have dispatches this much, of, this much of tents and blankets and jerrycans, just to give us indication that we have the right stock available to make sure that we are ready to support when a disaster happened. And imagine if you can link this with, with um, uh, weather broadcast related uh, uh, new AI as well, it will give you a better understanding. There is something else that we are working on right now uh, is try, we have met already a company who can give us um, an estimation that when a disaster happens somewhere, it will give you an indication immediately that this is the nearest country for you, the nearest hub for you, and this is the stock available. And also it might give you two more important things about the estimation of the cost for transportation, only estimation. So it may, it may make your decision or the entire decision easier. And also uh, the impact in uh, uh, the C CO2 emission, the carbon footprint by using this hub or using this hub, how you are affecting the, 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 uh, the carbon emission of each trip and support. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything. This is in general uh, a brief about the same. We are always ready to, to, to answer your questions if you have any or further clarification at any time. Uh, you can reach us through uh, uh, Logistic Cluster. We're more than happy to do that. Uh, thank you, Ziad, uh, for uh, your presentation. If I may, I would like to to add something just to complete the picture. Uh, try to imagine now the Stockholm project, uh, the platform which is uh, managed by Florent. Uh, and that is the reason why I made my congratulations to the cluster in putting together the three presentations today, tomorrow, and the day after. Uh, Florent, as I said, my introduction. Uh, is taking care about the national stocks and how it's important to know exactly what is already into the affected country. This is extremely important during the international call and during the international uh, response. 
Now, and together with Florent, it's clear that uh, uh, we are working together. We are working together, of course, not only with Florent, but with the full uh, impact working group. We are part of them. And the idea is to create a sort of uh, link uh, between uh, the two platforms in order to get uh, much more information. And this is going really to render, that is my humble opinion, uh, much more sustainable, our uh, emergency response. Uh, for sure it's going to be faster. For sure we can impact even the local and national preparedness because there is no doubt that this is the most sensitive area where we should work on the local preparedness. We, we have the luxury, of course, in the international humanitarian hubs to have our own time for uh, preparing ourselves. But what is much more relevant is the local, uh, is the local preparedness. And this is where I believe that uh, uh, we should uh, work extremely close together with uh, the Stockholm project. And again, I'm happy that uh, we have in a row in three days uh, these uh, three presentations. And without excluding, of course, how relevant is going to become <coughs> the customs uh, action in uh, moving stocks across the borders. We know very well that frequently we have, uh, for uh, many reasons, customs which are not blocking, uh, but let's me say, trying to, to get a clear picture on what is coming into a country. To have tools or systems that are dealing directly among themselves, I believe that is extremely important to, uh, to link uh, all of them together. I'm seeing that there is a, a some questions, if there is any plan to extend the hub also to any location in Southern Africa, we are not extending any hub, let me be clear. What we did is that we mapped the current uh, 11 humanitarian hubs, which are responding to international, uh, uh, let me say, request of assistance. And when I'm referring the 11 uh, uh, humanitarian acts, I'm referring to those that are, uh, for example, the one seated in Brisbane in Australia, uh, the one which was temporarily used in China in Guangzhou, the, the two that are seated in uh, Malaysia in Port Klang by IFRC and uh, in Subang uh, by UNHRD. I'm talking about uh, the Dubai International Humanitarian City hosting multiple uh, stocks. I'm talking about UNHCR presence in uh, Jordan, in uh, Kenya and in Cameroon. I'm talking about the UNHRD in Accra. I'm talking about the UNHRD in Brindisi. I'm talking about the IFRC hub in the Canary Islands. I'm talking about the Panama hub. Now, if there is any other app which is responding to international uh, assistance, welcome uh, and uh, <laughs> we are ready to work together with them, but we are not going to, mm, it's not our job to open apps. Our aim is to facilitate the information sharing. Uh, you had the opportunity of seeing the video, all of them, including the former executive director of UNICEF signed a letter of intent in order to share the information. The same Tunnel Nagel uh, and the same MSF signed an agreement for sharing information. So uh, whoever has uh, stocks for international response, we are more than happy to work together and to include them into the, the, into the platform. There is another information. It is quite obvious that if uh, the logistics cluster, for example, if uh, 
uh, MSF or UNHCR want to reflect the humanitarian logistics data bank in their own websites, oh, ready to facilitate the interface. This is not an information property of Dubai International Humanitarian City Community. The property of this information belongs to, first of all, to the affected countries, and secondly, to the humanitarian community as a whole. Um, I'm coming to you, uh, Sylvia. I was reading a couple of, uh, go ahead anyway, Sylvia, sorry. Uh, thanks, Giuseppe. No, I was I was really going to, uh, to to ensure that you're seeing the questions that are popping up uh, in the chat. I'm happy to read them, or you can go through them. Uh, we have uh, one from Hans. Just uh, um, it, it, uh, you can <clears throat> and then just wanted to ensure that. Yeah, yeah. No, Hans. Uh, uh, we can share, of course, the link. I believe that is. Uh, uh, that is uh, in YouTube or in the uh, the channel of uh, IHC Jihad, uh, for sure can share uh, the link. Uh, for uh, uh, Renato, uh, again, if you open the, uh, apart that your colleagues here in Dubai, of course, they have the full access. Uh, Jihad didn't explain uh, this kind of detail. Obvious that uh, if you if you note know that within the the presentation the the the, the life uh, dashboard we express the values in U.S. dollars, but there is another window through which you know exactly the number of beneficiaries that those talks can serve. But the point is that if the data are read by a technician, by a technical person who has familiarity with the stocks, is going to fully understand that the combination is uh, data of uh, multiple stocks, but is going to give uh, an idea how, ma on how many beneficiaries can serve uh, in terms of shelter, Dubai or uh, Panama or uh, Brindisi and so on. But that is the, the point. Where you can see today, today is uh, we have an interface in the website of ISC, but again, and I repeat, please, uh, whoever wants to reflect the humanitarian logistics data bank in uh, the website, uh, because MSF is part, of course, of uh, uh, the, those uh, organizations who supported us in building up the, of course, they are free to reflect the, 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 the logistics data. But today is in our website, you can visit easily, blah, blah, blah. But again, the message to the cluster is that if they want, the cluster can even have uh, uh, directly on their own. Uh, on their own uh, say website. Bruno, nice to hear your voice again. Oh, that, uh, before, we go, before we go to Bruno, I'm stealing the spot. But we also had another point in the chat uh, from Angeline on planning to extend in locations in Southern Africa. I don't know if you've seen. Uh, I, I, I responded, mm, okay. Sylvia, I clearly said whoever it stops for international response, welcome. But we are not, uh, we are ready to extend to other apps, but we are not building apps. So in the sense that it's, uh, if uh, you know existence of humanitarian apps, managing stocks for international response, ready to work together. We are here for the humanitarian community. Sorry, Bruno. No worries. Uh, good to see you again, Giuseppe. Thanks for the presentation, uh, Jihad, to you as well. Um, uh, th thanks a lot for showing us the, 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 
the massive strides forwards on the platform. How do you see this going forward? Because I think it's extremely interesting because it basically ch shows what is available and it's a usual access and availability question. Do you see this platform evolving from showing what is available to also showing what is accessible, meaning what are certain partners? And, and this question is partly also to Florent then, uh, uh, what partners would be willing to share? So can we move from availability to also an indication of access? And my second point, uh, my second question would be, I think it's extremely interesting that you can also pull the data based on customs uh, uh, data, what has been shipped to a certain country and a certain time frame. I'm wondering whether there are conversations on having kind of a formal informal interface uh, also on, on um, you know, connecting that back towards the needs, uh, the needs assessment in country. Is that then shared with, is there a formal way of sharing that with the humanitarian country teams, for instance, so that they are actually better aware also of, uh, uh, you know, how, how the response in country would be going. So uh, that we avoid flooding uh, infrastructure, but that we also have a timely uh, flagging uh, red lights uh, popping up and saying, hey, this pipeline is too thin. We're not going to be able to meet the requirements. And then that could, of course, then influence some, some donor decision making. So these two questions towards how you see this evolve. Thanks a lot, Giuseppe. Thanks, Bruno. Uh, Let me add another portion of information. Uh, Jad was mentioning the use of artificial intelligence. Uh, we started a few months ago. Uh, I know that somebody is not uh, exactly extremely confident on the, on the artificial intelligence. Uh, and, I'm more than 70 years old, so, but uh, despite my age, uh, I welcome the artificial intelligence into the humanitarian logistics data bank because uh, I'm pretty sure, Bruno, you remember we had discussions even in other logistics cluster meeting in Washington, how to get, let me say, the proper level of stocks in the various humanitarian apps. And, uh, if uh, my natural intelligence is not enough, I'm going to use artificial intelligence exactly in order to help us for identifying the best level of the stocks. Not only, but even the possibility of acceding to other stocks which are in the hands of the manufacturers and so on. So let's just move a little bit really looking into the future in a different manner. Now, accessibility of the stocks. What I can tell you is that she had substantially told us, here are the stocks, here are the owners of the stocks. And uh, accessibility can, uh, I'm, I don't have uh, any property with me. The stocks belong to the various uh, humanitarian organizations. So I cannot grant this access. What I can grant is access to the information. And uh, again, looking into the future, my, my vision is that uh, it's even too late what we are going to do together with Florent. Uh, if it was possible, I would love to start uh, most probably three days ago or a year ago. But uh, this is what we promised each other even recently in Brussels to start uh, from the next uh, HMPW and to bring there most probably and to start in looking how to connect, uh, let me say, the various platforms. Also because uh, this is something that is essential in my humble opinion. Thanks, Giuseppe. Uh, yeah, I, I already outsourced my uh, thinking capacity to my microwave anyhow. So. Uh, I need to rely on artificial intelligence, but I think it's an interesting thought that you do. And then imagine now, if you took a look at the future of artificial intelligence, imagine that part of the stocks could be crowdfunded. And then based on artificial intelligence, you have these needs assessments and, you know, and you have the whole algorithm behind it who are going to be justifying it so that stocks are not necessarily owned, you know, uh, singly owned, they're yes. jointly owned. And that would be a, a very nice, I mean, let's be honest now, we're talking five, 10 years in the future. That would be a very nice evolution on this towards, you know, uh, uh, crowdsourced, crowdfunded uh, um, stocks, which are artificially, based on artificial uh, intelligence, sent into theaters of operation on shortest possible notice. 
the digital, digital way we are involving the private sector. You know, but that the mega is the, the, the supply chain is uh, radically changing, especially in the humanitarian, uh, in the humanitarian assistance. Uh, there is a clear need of moving the production uh, with all of my respect, cannot be continued to be only and exclusively into the Southeast Asia, if you prefer into China. Uh, we cannot have a second uh, huge challenge such as we had during the COVID-19 pandemic. So there is a, a full picture that we need to see. Uh, we are working quite a lot with the private sector, Bruno. And this is what we are doing with the artificial intelligence is simply a, a young company, young entrepreneur who decided to embrace the, the, the humanitarian cause. I'm not paying a penny, to be honest with you. Those guys are raising funds on, on their own in order to support the, the, the project. So the private sector is fully involved. The more we are able to involve the, the, the private sector, including, of course, the manufacturers and so on. And obvious that at that point, uh, we can count even on uh, stocks that not necessarily are seated within the, within the humanitarian arms, but especially when we have uh, larger scale emergency. I saw before Angelina, uh, uh, was uh, raising the end. No, Giuseppe, that's uh, that's uh, Angelin. Yes, uh, greetings to all. No, it was a wrong uh, raised hand. So you go ahead. Oh, uh, again, I believe that. Uh, I, uh, I reply to your question. If there is really in, uh, any location in Southern Africa that there is any stocks for international response, uh, we are ready to, to incorporate and to, to work together with uh, the authorities for bringing the information into the, into the, the humanitarian logistics data bank. Uh, to describe the stockpiling of uh, UNHRD, we are, of course, here in Dubai, whatever is under the name of WFP means that it is going to absorb uh, UNHRD, the GVLP, Global Vehicle Leasing Program, the FITES. So everything is under the name of uh, WFP because we consider them as uh, one company. There is no only HS code, but we have also company codes. And uh, this is where uh, uh, we are working quite closely with uh, UNHRD for obvious reasons, uh, because uh, this is from where I'm coming. But uh, more than this, I believe that uh, they are uh, willing and they and we have a full access to their own information uh, on the various humanitarian apps. Do you have any other question? Or if I jump any question, Sylvia, did I jump something? I have just added my email in the uh, chat box as well, in case anybody has any further clarifications, they can write directly to me. Chat that link that you put this is there the website the for the data bank and uh, for the video. I'm, 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 I, will send, I will share it now. Uh, I'm waiting, uh, waiting for the updated one. As Peter was uh, looking for the yeah for the link. Hans, I will send it to you. Don't worry. Good to see you, my friend. Pepe, che passa? Ciao, Giuseppe. Tutto bene, uh, uh, and uh, greeting from South Africa. Uh, thanks uh, to you, thanks Jad for the presentation. Uh, maybe just a question, uh, more um, linked to the preparedness. Uh, what, what do you see like the role of the humanitarian data bank uh, uh, from IHC to support the preparedness effort at regional or global level, given like this uh, um, hub, this like this strategic hub that can support, of course, uh, response. But what could be the role when uh, we're talking about preparedness and maybe more specifically data preparedness, because uh, 
uh, you and Bear like a lot of uh, information in this sense. Thank you. Thanks, Pepe. Well, uh, when we talk about preparedness here, there is uh, the first information that I was giving to Bruno before. Uh, first of all, uh, the stock levels. This is something that really we are struggling, everybody. I believe that if we should go and look uh, the rotation of the stocks, you know, today for me is quite easy. Jihad can tell you exactly since how long certain line items are not rotating. And this means uh, occupancy of uh, space. Uh, I would be afraid if for that space we are even paying uh, electricity because it's, uh, it's a temperature control and so on and so on. There is another part that I was mentioned even before, uh, the lessons learned from COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and uh, on the, we have to stop uh, in saying uh, uh, that we need to standardize stocks. The stocks need just to be innovated, not to be standardized. We, we, we are talking about standardization of stocks in 1996, approximately 27 years ago. And I continuously hearing about the standardization of stocks uh, because it's appeared that we standardize even the world. Now, uh, the beneficiary seated in uh, Nepal is not exactly the same beneficiary that is seated in Honduras or the beneficiary that is seated in uh, uh, in any other African country. So uh, there is a, a clear need that now we have to try to look into, into the regional stocks. Uh, the, we need even to, to look into the stocks diversification, the how the same line items are composed. Yeah, we are talking about sustainability, but we are talking about sustainability since ages. But we are continuously dispatching stocks where the 10% of the gross weight is represented by rubbish. So, and we are not able to transform the rubbish into a value added. The packaging I'm referring is exactly happening into the humanitarian stocks, the same that is happening every single day whenever we are coming back from the supermarket, going home, and then building up a huge, uh, a huge uh, bag of uh, rubbish. This is what is happening. So this is where we need to start in, uh, in preparing ourselves. I was even talking about uh, the link with uh, the national stocks. There, we need to, in my opinion, to work extremely closely with uh, the, national, uh, the national capacity, because again, uh, uh, those are not secrets. Those are the first basic elements that I have been teaching in 1984, that uh, whenever there is an emergency, is not uh, us moving from 3,000 kilometers far that we are going to save life, is the local community. So we need to empower the local community. We need to prepare the local community. But if we start in taking the 11 humanitarian apps that are there for supporting the international appeals, they are in clear regions. And we try to link together with uh, the national capacity. I believe that we are starting in doing a real emergency preparedness. Uh, uh, you know very well, especially at the logistics cluster level, that uh, if you don't have the local information, even uh, for the logistics, we are totally out. Flora. Yes, thanks a lot, uh, Giuseppe, for that. If uh, I don't want to preempt too much on the presentation tomorrow, but uh, definitely going in the same line of thought, uh, Giuseppe expressed about the fact that we need to connect this national level and this regional level. And to answer your question, Pepe, I believe uh, the evaluation and the assessment we do with Stockholm, as mentioned by Giuseppe, is very much at the national level in a preparedness capacity to see how much 
they should reorganize their stock in country or how much they should complement. And I think this is where I see the real value of complementing with the Humanitarian Data Bank, which is should uh, decision makers at the country level come to a point where they can realize what they're lacking as a preparedness measure, then they are in a better position to ask or to look for those complements of relief items directly from the, obviously from suppliers and local provider, but potentially also from regional hubs like this, which means that those regional hubs would become potentially much more um, a place from which you could complement national stock and therefore being therefore much more active as a preparedness mechanism rather than just or almost just being a response mechanism when you have very large disasters. So I believe those regional hubs through this humanitarian data bank could also get involved a bit more at national level and potentially a bit more for less massive disaster and for more day-to-day -day kind of disaster as well. So I think the link is also there a little bit. Yeah. I fully agree. Good. Wow. We are better than Swiss. 1456. Very good. Sylvia, we are back to you. Uh, thanks, Giuseppe, and uh, everyone for the uh, very interesting overview. Uh, I think, yeah, we are in perfect timing, and uh, we'll see everyone tomorrow at the same time for a uh, for long presentation. Uh, we will try to upload the video on the website and we'll uh, share additional information via the, uh, the community. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks to you, uh, Sylvia. Thanks to all the clusters colleagues. Thank for you. Our Thank you these two days. Thank you, Giuseppe. Thank you, Jad. Thank you. Thanks, See you. Uh, thanks to all of you. Ciao, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Take care. Bye. Ciao. Bye.